And action! <laughs> Disgust me. Grow up. Well said. Well then. Hello. Welcome to episode number what are we? Six. Six, seven, maybe. Seven, maybe. Uh-huh. That's fucking terrible. I mean, I should have known that before I fucking started pressing record. We are back for what's the script? Movie review this week is Castaway, starring Tom Hanks. How are you, Christopher? Yes, yes, it's another day in paradise. <laughs> really? <laughs> that toll cross has fucking renamed itself to now, eh? Aye, aye. Well, we need, we need to get on, don't we? Of course we do. We can't live in a dystopian future, you see. Could be worse, man. You could be in sunny than took care. <laughs> I'm the only prodigy in the village. <laughs> well, we're in our couple, it's not so bad. Um, Aye, so we took in Castaway this week, folks, uh, starring Tom Hanks. It was uh, released in 2000, wasn't it? Aye, fucking made me feel ancient, mate. I know, but even at that, I thought it was 90s, but there you go. Um, and a bit of product placement in this film, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> aye. Oh, I, the, apparently they, they never took any money for it either. FedEx? Aye. I know what our fucking free advertising for 2 hours and 24 minutes, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, man. Jesus Christ. So, um, as we say, Stan, Tom Hanks and Holly Hunt, is that right? Helen Hunt, maybe. Helen Hunt, for, or as I'll be referring to from now on in as the Napper. That's what she's getting called <laughs> because of that fucking big Frankie Fordham. So, all my notes that have to relate to her is the Napper. All right. Heat! 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 <laughs> So don't get lost, he's a bit well warned. Um, so Chris really starts off um panning in on like open fields and we come to the first thing I noticed, right? Was a crossroads. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um goes to this wee farm. Uh, or a ranch, sorry. Is it Dick Dick and Bettina or something? Aye. Dick and Bettina. That's Aye. right. And that's how you first see that wee wings. Symbol mm-hmm. that plays such a part, <laughs> such a prevalent part indeed. Uh, and it's the wee FedEx fan that's just gone to pick something up for Bettina Ranch, and it's uh, a young lady in there, and she's doing a bit of iron welding and sculpturing in her in her, uh, her barn, isn't she? Yeah, uh, and she's also listening to Elvis. Yes, again, which is quite prevalent. Yeah, really. The, Fed- the FedEx isn't dropping off; it's picking up, isn't it? Uh, it's picking up and it's taking this uh, package to Russia, namely Moscow. Uh, yeah. And I think this is this is being sent to Dick, isn't it? I think he is Dick. He uh, he's be. Dick. Because he answers the door in a robe uh, with a fucking Russian bride, but he's still got a 10 gallon hat on, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, he's, so, he's still wearing the cowboy boots, are not he? Uh, and the wee Russian delivery drivers, ooh, they take the cowboy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, aye, and then, uh, but it follows the driver again, doesn't it? Aye. Uh, to a, a wee cafe sort of thing with another, he's dropped off for another parcel. And it mm-hmm. kind of, it's a wee boy, yeah, a wee boy takes the parcel, doesn't he? And runs across aye. Moscow to, where are we calling this? Uh, the sorting office? Depot or something, aye, mate. So, aye. The, the wee cafe that the boy gets the parcel for is it right on Red Square, isn't it, man? It's like in the shadow of Lenin, who's obviously just fell for power or taking down the signs and stuff like that, aye. which is near real bearing on the film because it's nothing to do with communism or anything like that, but it's just showing you a sign of the times. Aye. And the, the wee boy runs to the, the depot where we see, well, we hear Chuck before we see him, didn't we? We just see the back of him up a ladder. Aye, uh, fucking emphasising time, be on time, fucking beat the clock, this whole shit. Uh, maybe, that, maybe that's what the whole thing is about, see the, the Lenin getting took down. Maybe it's like a China, like a Russia's opening up to the world sort of thing. 
True, mate. Aye, because everything is really prevalent to, to time, isn't it? Uh-huh. I mean, his, his big war cry is do not turn your back on time. Um, <laughs> which, throughout, you realise that he's not really practising what he's preaching. He oh, is definitely. in the shape of FedEx and his job and it's number one in his list of priorities, but uh, with life, not so much. Oh, definitely not, mate. Uh, take time to love, mate. Take time to love. Yeah, exactly. So what, he, what, he, what he's got delivered is a parcel that he sent himself of a clock, a countdown clock, and it's took him, um, eight, it's took 87 hours for this parcel he sent himself to get from Memphis to Moscow. And he says it's shocking and all that, didn't he? <laughs> Aye, which, considering me, fucking what, 87 hours or something, I've, need, I've waited there enough a fucking month for this bastard <laughs> t shirt. <laughs> Anybody that's not watching, this is a fucking a dodgeball t shirt. There you are. Anything you've got to be buying for now on in, FedEx a bastard, do you know what Aye. I mean? Oh, well, this might have been on a FedEx plane and it fucking crashed. Aye. But, so that's that. So the countdown clock in the warehouse is for three hours. And it turns out that him and his team, who's obviously over there overseeing, they've got three hours to clear the warehouse, set all the FedEx stuff and load all the vans and to start a wee fucking uh, kind of line and all that and they get all the vans. They're just ready to go. And then somebody runs in and says, Van, he's stopped, stuck. <laughs> hey. oh, uh, just before this, I know, uh, as the wee boys reward, he gives them chocolate, a CD player. And an Elvis CD. Can't it be bad, eh? Nah, exactly. Fucking when what stickers did you were... get for your first delivery? <laughs> no. I think I got a 10 pence tip because it was a paper I delivered. Do you know what I mean? But aye, um, aye that's what he gets. A, a big Snickers, a big Snickers used to be. Yeah. And, um, a portable CD player, which is now known as Retro Tech. <laughs> <laughs> and, and an Elvis CD, which which isn't a bad education if it's going to be your first CD, definitely. Yeah. So they find out that one of their vans has been clamped out in the square. Mm-hmm. Everybody stops, open up the doors, and they start handballing all the stuff to get it to the to the airport in time, didn't they? Uh, that's it. Again, emphasising on his thing. Everything has to be on time. There, there can't be any delays. Wasted time. You know what I mean? Can't be wasting any time. Definitely no. Which is what FedEx is all about. <laughs> this is the a two hour twenty four minutes advert for fucking how magic FedEx is. <laughs> so Chris, you just said that they never took any money, didn't you? No, uh, I, 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 I it wasn't a pre agreed either. It was just we're using FedEx, but I can see why they didn't they fucking like you says. Oh, you're not using your name. That's know what I mean. <laughs> Great advertisement. Going to see this. Great advertisement. So he phones home, um, didn't he? And uh, speaks to Stan as well uh, on the way home. Um, and Stan's one of his colleagues for FedEx. And then he just remembers that how did uh, how did your wife get on with the doctors? And it's no good news for his pal. Aye, uh, uh, she's the cancer or something, isn't it? Or is that, is that a tumour, isn't it? Uh, terminal illness of some sort anyway so yeah. even though he's asked about it he's really it's no as high in his list of priorities as it should be as a friend you know what I mean he's not just a colleague he's a good pal yeah. um, and it's just as a jump to go into the uh, the airport he says look I can maybe you know give you a number of a doctor that's quite good and that's kind of he thinks he's done his, his bit there yeah so after that we we fast forward right to him arriving at the Napper's place of business. <laughs> uh, see, was the, is, is that a nurse? The, the, she's not a nurse, isn't she? No, because no, see, at the end, they never really, even though when he, he says at the end about, I thought you'd have been a professor or a teacher or something like that, but no, she's into some kind of science, I think, but I'm unsure as to what, because when he arrives at her place of business, it's more a a lab kind of thing and she's fucking photocopying like a secretary you know what I mean <laughs> exactly that's what it is just one because it, 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 it looks like a hospital you know what I mean aye aye and she turns oh. around and that's when you see the napper she's got her hair <laughs> tied back this big forehead I can only imagine seeing that in the cinema man that they're frightened the shite right at me if a helicopter was flying by they'd try to land on it you know what I mean <sighs> <laughs> 
And they had a wee, she's like, oh, you're home, you're home. She's missed him, and obviously, obviously he's away more than he's home. And they have a wee jig, wee jig at the Xerox machine. <laughs> we need music. Uh, by the way, do you think Helen Hunt's fucking ears are burning in the <laughs> Fucking, she'll not hear them for the size of her head. The sound will not get by. Fucking, her Herman Munster. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> um, so it oh. goes to the to their kind of flat, their house, and it's just yeah. panning across the flat. And this is where you see that he's got uh, a certificate for sailing. Aye, loan sailing. Loan sailing. You're quite right, mate. Dirty bastard. And that's, oh, that's cheating. <laughs> aye, aye. So after that, they go to they go to bed, and the next thing you know, they're at a, a big gathering of people running up running about the table having I think it's Thanksgiving dinner, isn't it? Oh yeah, Christmas, Christmas dinner. Is it? Because Thanksgiving is like a week before Christmas, isn't it? I but I think see if uh, went obviously after it, the, she he talks to her in the car and they exchange gifts. Uh-huh. I think he says Merry Christmas as he's leaving. Aye. Aye, it does, but it didn't say whether Christmas was the next day or the next week. Aye. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm just being pernickety. I was okay. just looking at what was in the uh, the plates of food and stuff like that, and Aye. I kind of seen a big a big glazed ham, and uh, I seen the acorns there, which are kind of prevalent with uh, Thanksgiving. But our American and Canadian friends will be able to tell us more about that. Hopefully, if they watch it, um, so they're having a good laugh. They're with family and friends. They're, um, some dimensions when are you going to make an honest woman of her? Right. <laughs> and it's obviously a, a subject that often crops up in it. It's like, Aye. I point to his watch. Oh, how long did it take up? What did you have? Aye. We never Aye. even got to Putin. Never even got pie. That's, before, <laughs> that's a new record. Aye. Uh, brilliant, man. And then um, his, his bad tooth acts up, doesn't it? Aye. It's the first time you notice he's got too thick. Aye, but I did say on the phone before that um, I'm going to have to go to the dentist or something like that but you do see him going like that wincing and we glass of red wine will sort that out young Chuck <laughs> oh, of course of course do you notice one of the guys at the table the older guys because um, it's quite an elderly group to be honest with you. Um, but the glasses and stuff he was a shopkeeper at the Waltons was he? aye I can't remember his name but uh, he's a nosy bastard at the Waltons <laughs> All these people fucking dodging the draft to live up in the mountains, go to his shop. You know what I mean? Uh, exactly. <laughs> but uh, there you go. So they're having a good time. It's all merry and jolly, and then his beeper goes. And as soon as uh, that happens, Napper knows, don't you? Uh, he's like he's like fucking he's like Batman with a bat signal with that fucking thing. And I should uh, also point out, it's like at that dinner table is the first time you see that fucking hoaching jumper that he's got, man. <laughs> And do you know everybody in the planet Earth at a certain age, mate, would have had a jumper like that? Big woolly motherfucker with zigzags and you, know I mean? you get one drop of rain on it and it weighs about I'm, 97 stone. I'm I'm no stranger to a Christmas jumper and all, but that man was fucking horrendous looking. Ah, you see if it was a Christmas jumper, it would have been no too bad, but it was fuck all saying Christmas one, it was just a jumper. Like, <laughs> horrible, horrible, mate. Oh, fucking, oh, rancid. <laughs> Aye. So it turns out they get into a wee room together, they're packing up his bag, he's trying to work out when he might be back, when he might not be back. She says, please promise me we'll be back for New Year's Eve. Please yeah. promise. Aye, that's, that's where you kind of see that fucking, he lives for his job, and they need to plan the life around his job, oh. which, well, I said to you the other night there, I believe there was mystical forces at hand here. Because this is... <laughs> it's no way you'd be living your life. And it, oh, no, no, definitely I mean? no. So, it's, it's just unfortunate, mate, as we know, that it's, it's easier said than done to fucking work-life balance, you know what I mean? No, definitely. It's uh, really hard, but that's what happens. So, it says, I'll be back for New Year's Eve, I promise, not that, but it, but it really can, I promise. Aye. It really can, um, and they get in the car, they drive to the airport. No, and this is where they all start, uh, like I say, is exchanging gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, how I uh, he's she's gave him something that he, he really likes and all that, and then he's he's whipping out items that he's 
picked up at the airport or something, you know what I mean? Um, you <laughs> start with the, the fucking the red herrings, isn't he? The... Oh, there's a beeper for you. There's a beeper. And she's like, oh, thanks. Because <laughs> you need to know where the fuck I am, you know what I mean? Uh, exactly. Oh, I, I'm... I, I bought, you, I bought you these hand towels. You know how you like hand towels. <laughs> oh, you love hand towels, mate. Oh, you're never shut up about the hand towels there. And the first thing she's got is the, the leather binder with the writing. Uh, got a writing set binder thing. And this like is all after she's gave him probably a, a priceless family heirloom. Uh, I have well, something for your meaning for, you know what I mean? Uh, what was it? A, a, a pocket watch, wasn't it? Uh, a timepiece. A time time piece. Piece. I like that better. <laughs> that sounds a lot better. <laughs> yeah, aye, aye. What was what was it? Our, our granda's uh, pocket watch or something? Aye, so, he, he done something. He navigated something where he sailed with it or something aye, like that. Aye, the Pacific. That's what it is down the Pacific where this this young man eventually spends a couple of years at. Aye, and <laughs> funnily enough, the timepiece wasn't that size because when you flip it open, there's a picture of an apple <laughs> inside it. <laughs> Is this a laptop? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking vanity. There's a legs on this. Jesus. <laughs> Can eat but my dinner after that. <laughs> but it, it, it just it shows you the comparison of it. She's like kind of all in. He's all for it. And he's just picking up whatever he can get at the time. Aye. Um, aye well, so... For, so we're all led to believe, so is an upper led to believe that she's given this thoughtful gift. He <laughs> gave her a wad of shite because he's too busy to fucking think about anything else. And then he gets out of the car, says, I love you, and walks away. And she just looks at him. And then he stops and goes, ah, and turns back, didn't he? Aye, aye. And he, he hands her the keys, which has got his wee trusty pen knife, mm-hmm. which would have came in handy for what aye. later happens. But he... Uh, it gives her this wee box that's obviously, well, we're led to believe, or she kind of makes us believe that it's going to be this engagement ring that she's been waiting for. Mm-hmm. for and they make this promise, um, don't open it until I come back. Aye. So, and then, so she's all fucking, oh, I'm so scared right now and stuff. How <laughs> does that look? Just wait till Christmas morning or wait till I come back, as you say, mate, and we'll open it together. And then he walks away. And then his last words to her are, oh, oh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Aye. And that's him heading to the which, FedEx plane. So which, uh, have, you, have you seen Scream? As always, the last words. Yeah, anybody that says that, I'll be right back. Aye, <laughs> aye, exactly. Fucking right it is, man. So <laughs> it boards flight FedEx 88. Aye. Um, okay. And... Obviously, we don't know where he's going or what he's trying to deliver or something like that because that wasn't made kind of prominent. It doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and before we know it, um, it's panning around the aeroplane and there's a wee bit of... He's sleeping, isn't he? Aye. Aye. Yeah. He kind of... He wakes up and he's got... A, uh, I think he's, he's got the toilet, hasn't he? He's got Aye. to go to the toilet. But he goes in to see the pilots and there's a bit of fucking uh, animation happening, shall we say. I was, was, as I say, when he's sleeping and there's just a wee, a wee jolt in the plane and it wakes him up. Aye. And you say, mate, he looks about, makes sure everything's okay and goes to the lavvy. Aye. Which uh, is toilet in Scottish people. <laughs> lavvy. It's uh, an abbreviation the of the French word lavatory. <laughs> la tod or latrine. Latrine le, le pipi. And le poo poo. Uh, eh, le kick. Le kick. <laughs> <laughs> le fire one out. <laughs> <laughs> so he's into the, the, the sorry guys uh, he goes into the aeroplane toilet he's just washing up freshening up and stuff like that and then fucking boom Aye. before you know it he's hanging out the toilet door hanging onto the sink as if he's getting sucked out so Aye. it's been an obviously obvious loss in cabin pressure somewhere hasn't there yeah, definitely man see that, that was fucking see when I seen that he's getting sucked up into the air and he's fucking hanging on for dear life for all this um, and I was like, oh, that's that's the fucking watch off then. Aye. Because the watch was lying on a, a an armrest. I was like, there's no way that's there. Aye. Aye. Because everything gets sucked out, doesn't it? Yep. Any, any pla- every, well, I've never been in a fucking plane crash, but every <laughs> film we see, everything goes out. 
And then, do you ever notice as well in every film you've ever seen, right? If there's a loss in cabin pressure, all of a sudden, all this paper comes for something else to get sick to it. As if somebody's been filing behind the camera. <laughs> oh, every time I was, I, I used to think fucking uh, airplanes were stuffed with fucking paper. There was that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, me, paper that airplanes. Is that where paper airplanes come to? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> fucking. But it's like anything else, I know. Let's see any film explosion. Ah. Uh-huh. Piece, piece of paper up here everywhere. Aye. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. I was going to make comparisons there to some real life things, but I'll know. No. Um, definitely no. It happens in every film. A million sheets yep. of paper. Do you know what I mean? So the plane's in turmoil. It's going down. We know that much. Um, he straps himself back in. And as you say, he notices the watch fucking rattling about. The watch hasn't been sucked out. No. Um, he's got a choice between the watch and a life jacket, hasn't he? No. Aye. It kind of... It's showing you that he, he, can't, he cares for his, his wife's fucking prized possession sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather than his own life. But in doing so, one of the cabin crew comes out to try and save him and gets jutted up into the air and waxes his head. Oh, now, what a belt of that. Aye, it is going to be the worst looking heat bang I've ever seen. <laughs> can see the way the guy's acting, I know. He's, he's shaking and all that. And you're going, oh, that, that was slow, but he's not just stubbed his toe. <laughs> aye, exactly. You <laughs> know what I mean? It. If he's been taken off his feet, whatever way you look at it through physics, he's either stayed where he was and the planes fucked him in the heat. Oh, <laughs> or exactly. the jokes. Either way, do you know what I no. mean? It's enough to... Well, it killed the lassie in Flight, the film Flight, same thing. Oh, no, I think he's a vice captain, actually. He was kind of pally when, wasn't he? Aye. Um, and he Aye. comes out and he gives him a life raft, mm-hmm. which is an auto-inflatable life raft, which is not yet inflated, obviously. Um, all the while, the cargo's getting shifted... Um, and Chuck's looking at the the cockpit window, and he can just see the water's coming towards him, isn't he? No, aye, it's just the nose diving practically, isn't it? Again, down and down hard. But quite, it's quite a tense scene. The crash scene, I think, because there's there's not really a lot of mayday, mayday, and stuff like that. It's just noises in it. It's just aye. aircraft. It's realistic, man. Realistic. Very. So you get kind it's, of pent up. See, that's what gives me the fear about flying, man. See if shit like that does happen. Mm-hmm. You're helpless. That's it. Well, <laughs> I can't remember what the film was, but they said, if this plane goes down, put your legs, your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think <laughs> Billy Conley said it as well, actually. <laughs> uh, so the plane's um, turned apart after it crashes. It hits the water. Water floods in and stuff like that. Um, it finds a wee air pocket for a, for a matter of moments. And you can see that the fuselage tearing apart under the stress of the, the water and stuff like that, can't you, man? Yeah. Aye. I soon falls up the water, but then he remembers he's got this uh, life, life raft. raft. Aye. So he pops that and it's dragging him to the surface, but the wee red bag gets caught. And I presume the wee red bag is full of tools and. That was his torch and his whistle. <laughs> I know, right? The two things that you must have if a plane hits the deck at fucking 900 miles an hour is a torch and a whistle. (laughs) There was was no no space on the door, Craig. There was no space on the door. (laughs) Aye, so it snags on the plane's going down, hits snags, and it's dragging them down with a life raft. But uh, thank God it it snaps and the life raft takes them to the surface in the water. And then... The plane's not fully submerged yet. It's then you hear the fucking the engine noise in it. Aye, aye, and it's slowly churning him towards it, isn't it? Aye. I mean, at that point, he must have been thinking, what the fuck did I do bad in life? You <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> Hell fucking, you, man. Definitely. Trapped in the middle of the ocean, and it would be fucking blended, you know what I mean? Aye, but just before the engine can suit him and his raft towards it, the water gets in it first, and that all breaks up, because into fire and explodes and stuff. No, Once yeah. again, that's him under the water again. It's uh, miraculous that how easily that life raft punctured eventually on other no. things that an explosion fucking never did it. <laughs> One Indestructible. <laughs> um, so the waves, we pan out. Obviously, the planes went down. He's in the life raft. It's hellish weather. 
mm. and the size of the waves, man. When it pans out, the, the further it gets out, the weirder he gets, and you see the size of the waves, man. It's like uh, humongous. Right, so that film, the perfect storm, isn't it? You know, I thought exact same thing, mate. I've seen <laughs> that film twice, and the uh, true story, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and that's the first thing I thought because it's like the waves when that wee boat eventually does get in uh, nah. towards the end. Uh, disappears, man. Aye. Uh, it's just, it's, I think it's like kind of showing, like, see the cinematography there. Obviously, it's CGI or whatever, but it's like mm-hmm. showing you that he's a speck, really, isn't he? Oh. It means he's just, pff, chances of somebody finding you out there is fucking back exactly. to zero. Exactly, mate. Definitely. And as we say, that whole plane crash scenario was excellent because it was like a kind of less is more kind of thing. Aye, um, I mean, the only, only better plane crash I've seen in movies was the, the film with Nick Cage. And he kind of sees the future a wee bit. Oh, uh, knowing. Knowing. What a film. And bit he just gets out his car and sees the plane crashing right across <laughs> him and all that. I thought that was... Fact got me because you see the people on fire and all that, and it's like, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. And the yeah. camera was as if it was, do you know what I mean? Like real, <laughs> oh, like a fucking Cloverfield camera, yeah, exactly. But, um, anyway, that's another film for another day. <laughs> um, so he's obviously passed it at some point, hasn't he? Aye, and see, all right, I, I, I know he like he, he washes up, um, and he hits rocks, right? But that's puncture, aye. <laughs> And he's not got a repair kit. And <laughs> he, he washes up onto the beach, right? <clears throat> My question is, see every film where somebody is lost at sea or whatever, mm-hmm. how do they always end up on a beach or on an island? Why did they never get pushed further out to sea? Aye, aye. It depends. <laughs> I suppose it depends where you crash, where the waves are taking you. Uh, didn't it, I suppose. But you're right. But it would have been a shitey film if they'd <laughs> ever get washed up the beach, mate. Um, but no, you're right, you're right. For the sake of the story, I think it's just one of the things, mate. Uh, so he gets his first puncture, he wakes up for the sound of busting <clears> on his life raft. It's hurt the rocks on his yeah. wee island. And as you say, he washes up on the beach. Yeah. And that jumper looks a bit fucking... Uh, 10 stone. 10 stone. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just... You could you just know how uncomfortable that is, don't you? It's just because you know it's just stuck to him. <laughs> uh, Fast you are a jumper, man. Absolutely uh, brilliant. Oh, uh, fucking. And then obviously he's walking on the beach, and he, so he wakes, wakes up the next morning and he starts walking along the beach, which again I despise sand. Oh, so mate, he's, same. Hate it. He's walking about with a jumper that's stuck to him and it's ugly, and he's walking about and he soaks on sand. All right. This... That's another thing about the sand, mate. See, on films, they wash up on the beach, as you said, all the time. And all the time after it, they've got sand all around about their mouth and all that. <laughs> I'm like, ah, fucking, <laughs> <laughs> wipe that away for your mouth. Exactly, mate. Oh, it ends up, boys, his man, it's like, fucking, how did you get there? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, rifles his pockets, didn't he? And his, uh, his pager is obviously pff, flooded. And then he That's pulls a watch it. The no. napper gave him, <laughs> and uh, I think that's Stoke Tickney as well, wasn't it? Aye, aye, aye. Then uh, this is where we see the first FedEx parcel washes up on the beach, isn't it? Just muted myself to sneeze there, sorry. <laughs> aye, aye, the FedEx parcel started start appearing, mm. and then it's along the beach. And I get a wee bit of anxiety about that, I know, because he's left us. What's left his raft as the tide's coming in. I'm like, I'm take that fucking raft away. Get a raft, put that safe somewhere. In the boxes. See, that's what I mean when I start talking about it's fucking. It's just, see the way it's done. It's quite, it's like they've simplified a lot of this stuff, you know what I mean? And it's just, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. It's, don't lose that, you know what I mean? Aye, definitely. And it's, it's, then I know I noticed his trousers. They look as if he stole his big brother's trousers. They're fucking massive on him. <laughs> They can't have just been a wetness unless they were made a fucking, I don't know, kitchen roll or something. Oh, <laughs> one sheet is plenty. Hey, <laughs> fucking trousers are away down by his feet, man. Aye. A pair of trousers that fit you, a stupid bastard. 
and he starts shouting for help and stuff like that. But obviously, he's on his lonesome. Right. See, oh, obviously, I've been to a uh, crash landing of the sea and end up on his island. But I think living on a wee desert island would be smashing. <laughs> just out there, <laughs> just not having to listen to the fucking world's problems, man. Just... I do not disagree with you. However, I think you would tire after a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen. Oh, you could just you could play with yourself in a hammock and drink coconut. I mean, what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> now, Aye, there's a bounty advert. <laughs> uh, exactly. Doesn't know he's got coconut shit, but it's that first night he goes to sleep and wakes up with a bang. Shaking yourself. Yeah, he thinks there's a fucking uh, somebody on the island running about. Aye. Which, by the way, app- apparently this film inspired uh, Lost. Lost, that's right. Aye. Uh, yeah, which is, I love Lost. Don't care what MD says about it. Um, so I so he's made it through the first night, wakes up in the morning, decides to, well, before he went to bed, he put help on the beach, just in the Aye. sand, and half of that's washed away. The time no. <laughs> so he gets he decides I'll get some logs and I'll make a help kind of sign so you can see it far far and he hears the bangs again in the bushes <laughs> starts shouting who's that <laughs> who's there <laughs> oh fucking bro you, you would be you'd be so shaking yourself about wouldn't you of course you would this, you're like oh fuck <laughs> do you know I hadn't seen this film in that long I forgot it was a coconut I was waiting on Maybe it was lost again. I was waiting on a fucking wild boar coming out the bushes or something like that. Aye. See, it reminds me of a film I know, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like, it's like an American soldier and a Japanese soldier. They end up washed up on a beach. Oh, aye, aye, aye. Uh, I'm not going to get it, but I, I know I'm not talking about it. It's a great film, mate. Aye. They end up That's what working, I was working together, didn't they? Aye. Fucking. There's no war. No war on this island. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's going to be there's some other fucking lunatic on this beach you know what I mean aye and there's mere boxes coming in by this time as well mere FedEx boxes from the, the crashed plane and he's obviously convincing himself that he's going to be rescued sooner rather than later because the boxes are still going to be delivered as far as he's concerned he keeps all the boxes in his wee shitty campsite that he's made <laughs> I say shitty, I don't think I could do any better with what I had at hand, but I know if I'd had a whistle with me and a torch, that would have all I'd have needed, mate. All I'd have needed. Well, girls, eat your heart out. Right. So he's walking in the, in the water and on, you see his feet are all cut to bits and bleeding yeah. as well. And uh, he decides to rip up some cloth and uh, make some uh, shoes for himself. But yeah. before that, he's, he's realised it's a coconut, isn't he? Aye, aye. He sees uh, the coconuts and obviously <laughs> he tries to open them. It just <laughs> it's, it's it's horrible, mate. Isn't it? It, is, it, is, it just it, it shows you, but it just regresses back to caveman, doesn't it? Because uh-huh. he tries to break it with a rock and ends up with like this sharp rock, and you see him like a man possessed. But could you uh, imagine that? He's always on that island. Fucking off. Oh. Ah, you know what you. The fucking your lifeblood's in this coconut in it because it's only right. fresh kind of drinking water for miles around or uh, thousands of miles around probably. Right. <clears throat> but um, he starts, <laughs> he launches it at the cliff wall. <laughs> no joy. Then, as you say, he starts hammering it with a rock. Right. Then he's got a, a jaggy rock that he hangs it against. It's still again a kind of day. And then he kind of makes a kind of, he fashions himself a sharp rock and starts just scribing the weight at it, doesn't he? No. Right. Uh, it's like the old flint fucking axes on that the cavemen and shit used to use, you know what I mean? Aye. It's a, well, it's just, it's like, just regressing back to uh, caveman stuff, but that's when he goes uh, exploring on the, the island as well, doesn't he? Uh-huh. And he finds a cave, but nothing else, really. He <laughs> still shouts in it, hello? <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, fucking... Uh, is that no, Sonny I mean, Bean's going to come at it? <laughs> Sonny Bean, yes. The whole family came out and chill him. <laughs> um, so, but he knows the cave's there, and that's when we see his feet bleeding through the water and stuff like that. More boxes are running about, and as you say, this is, it looks up, he sees there's a kind of peak to the island, Aye. and he thinks, I'm going up there. 
seen what's no. there. <laughs> uh, he goes up and he sees that it's just C for miles and miles, isn't it? Aye, see me. Up. See the sea. <laughs> I love to see me. <laughs> Aye. So then he realises two things. One, he's on an island. And two, him being a sailor, I would imagine that he's noticed the breakers all the way around the island. So yeah. there's going to be a one hell of a, a time trying to get through the breakers to get out to sea if he if he ever gets that far, sure. um, which is a shame because right. he knows he's fucked. But yeah, he's, coconuts, exactly. Right. Only takes <laughs> him half a day to open one. That, that was another wee smart angle put it at this film as well. That was, his name is Chuck Nolan. Uh-huh. Oh, see, we like, just is like his initial C Noland. Oh, I like it. I know, mate. That was that. Like, I was smashing, by the way. Yeah. And also, it was chucking coconuts. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm as brainy as you. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I like your one better, mate. C Noland. That's fucking quite. That's I, hope, I, I hope it was on purpose, by the way. I <laughs> hope it was, man. Aye. Oh, so they are. Well, if it's no, you patent that. No, uh, I mean, I'll you patent know, it. <laughs> patent it. Three years, it'll be the 25th year anniversary release. You get one that. Uh, Bonus uh, features is you sitting uh, with your <laughs> average Joe's gym fucking tap on and your wee Wilson in the background. I hope people are seeing this. Uh, there he is. You going to cut, you going to chip your horn later and give him a wee touch up? Aye, aye, that's well. I only <laughs> let's say chubbing ourselves here. Ah, cool. <laughs> so he's on the on the peak, he's noticed these two things and he also notices something in the water, didn't he? Aye, aye. Um I don't know if he can tell for up there, but it's it's another person in it. It's one of the, the flight crew. Aye. And I I I kinda of think it's the one that helped him, isn't it? Uh, I think so, aye. Um him with the slow heat. Uh him with, was he in a chair, but or did they just wash up? Oh, I, think just, I think he just washed up. Um, Aye. Uh, but he goes down the jumps and it does as if I think maybe he sees him for up there and thinks it's, it's a survivor because he jumps in Albert. the water. His name Aye. is Albert, I remember that. Um, but it's even that's quite horrific, the, the bitch you do see his face, he's fucking bloated and blown. He's not had a wee nibble at him yet for a fish, which is quite surprising. <laughs> well, it kind of puts in that dilemma. Had he not been bloated and obviously spoiled, yeah. would you would he have eaten? Fucking right, you would have. Definitely. Although he had not mastered the art of fire, but then I don't know if he would eat a raw human. But there you go. It's another film as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, alive. <laughs> but um, finds just three stuff. Um, finds Albert's wallet, his driving license, and a picture of him and his two boys. Not that it's quite sad, quite somber. He then realises that although he's missing, presumed dead, probably never get fun. This guy is missing, presumed dead, but he is Aye. actually dead. You know what I mean? Exactly. Aye. Plus, he, he kind of he realises I know that he's been saying the ga- the guy's name wrong for all this time. Aye. That's I think true. he was calling him Alan or something. Wasn't he? Aye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. So he did. I forgot to write that down. But you're right, mate. I remember that now. Which again shows you how he's. Uh, well, just the words I'm looking for. He was too busy thinking about the wrong things, wasn't he? That's it. Kind of, I hammering home that he didn't take time to fucking notice anything. A guy that's mad for time, you know what I mean? Exactly. So he tries on uh, Albert's shoes, and they're too wee for him. Aye. Um, and then he buries... <laughs> yeah, but that, just, that just took me back to die hard. So he's like... <laughs> Fucking hell, man. All the dead bodies in the ocean, and I had to pick one with smaller feet than my sister. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, tremendous. Oh, it kind of broke the it broke the tension. A bit, a wee bit, <laughs> uh, well, the next bit broke the tension because after he buries him, he says a, a very few words, and then uh, you next see him lying down with his feet up with an axe on, and he's cut the, the toes at them. <laughs> so they fit. And you're both thinking, clever, but quite funny and all, man. Yeah, definitely, man. It's fucking uncomfortable. Um, so it's, it's fun of your leaf, didn't it? Fun of your leaf with some water in it. Aye, it's, it sucks like that, like it's the fucking 
I don't know. The last, the last of the iron brew. Aye, well, it's fucking horrible. Um, oh. But this time he's fashioned. A, he's worked it away a cup of coconut when he gets into the actual coconut, uh, the furry bit, and bore a hole in it and drink on the milk. He catches the water out the leaves and this and uses them as cups, didn't he? The furry bit. Yeah. The furry bit. The furry bit, aye. Because see if you've not seen this film, the coconuts don't fall the way you fucking, you win them at the fun fair. They're no furry. They've got an outer shell, and that's what a canny break, man, at the start. This mad green tough shit. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, well, I should make fucking boats out of that, or maybe airplanes. I'm not going to do it. I saved all you bastards. I made, made shoes at them. Christ. <laughs> uh, so that night, he sees a wee blinking light, didn't he? That's it. The first wee sign of temptation. Uh, but it's, <laughs> I was like, aye, because it goes for a pee, didn't he? Aye. Just pees into the sea. Not one fuck given. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I mean, then he sees this wee light, but you know what I started laughing at? It's pitch black, right? And he just starts jumping about. Hey, hey! Oh, like, I know. Who the fuck's going to see you? Like, I think that's just fucking, I think we'd all do that, but it's oh. just one of the things. But I mean, I remember reading, you can see, I, see a candle, just one candle. You uh-huh. can see the flame of a candle for 13 miles. So you can the human eye, which uh-huh. is fucking amazing. But in pitch blackness, you can understand probably why you would. So uh-huh. they send us how far away this fucking boat is, but as you say, it's not within earshot, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, I, I he grabs, he, he got a torch off the pilot as well, didn't he? Aha, uh-huh, that's right. Uh-huh. It's one of the things he got off of Albert. And he starts doing the uh, SOS. Aye. <laughs> S-O-S. Come on! <laughs> uh, but... I the thing we uh, eventually we come comes to the morning, didn't it? And the light's still there. Aye, it's just it's just coming dusk and he can still see the light. He decides to fuck it. I'm going for this. I'm going to try and go over the breakers and what's left in my dinghy, didn't he? No, no uh, chance. With his wee head cloth. <laughs> Aye, no fucking absolutely no chance. He makes it over the first few, and then a big one just fucking puts him back himself. Loses the dinghy. And then our uh, wave comes, shoves him under, and the time he gets back to the beach, there's no wee blink light. Sun's yeah. out anyway, there's no way he's going to get noticed. Yeah. And that's his uh, that's his chance gone for that day. That's it. Uh, uh, plus, he, when he gets spun round by the wave, he gets uh, flung onto some coral reef. That's right. And it stabs into his leg, which looks awful. It does. <laughs> He's, it's enough for him to open his mouth wide as fuck under the water. <laughs> and I was boking at that bit because I could just imagine salt water going out of my mouth. No. <laughs> and he, fucking, he trudges back to the beach with the blood seeping out his leg. And you first see this yeah. film, you're like, ah, what's going to smell that blood? What's going to bite him? I know exactly. That's where my fucking mind went. Um, he never even thinks of fucking sharks, does he? No. Does he shite? Does he shite, the bastard? <laughs> <laughs> So he's we so leg, he goes to the cave, he decides to get into the cave, didn't he? Uh, aye, because then it ends up a storm, doesn't it? Uh-huh. It ends up another storm, so he's in there hiding away for it. And he, he finds uh, that the rainwater's come down inside the cave and formed a wee tiny puddle uh-huh. of fresh water for him. Uh-huh. And he's fucking delighted at that. Uh, as a wee drink. Total, total right into it. And again, like another wee bit of cinematography, it's like, as he falls asleep, he leaves the wee torch on. Uh-huh. And as the scene kind of fades out, the torch fades out. I think that like kind of symbolises that his hope is faded as well. Well well seen, mate. Well seen. So his hope's diminishing along yeah. with the battery of the fucking torch. You're quite right, mate. And it's, uh, the light's going out. It's quite apt in it, I suppose. <laughs> so we've got a new day. Uh, he's getting a bad leg. And he, he, say, he obviously thinks, fuck it, I'm going to bust these boxes open, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he starts finding his survival tools. Uh, so the first thing he finds is a birthday card, which just shows him that life's going on somewhere in the world. Yeah. But he's no party. And um, he finds a, a volleyball, a Wilson volleyball. <laughs> our man, our man. <laughs> uh, as well as uh, some ice skates and a lovely, a lovely cocktail dress. <laughs> Would you say that was lovely? 
<laughs> oh. No, no, I definitely know, mate. But he's got a use, he's, even then, as, as you say, like his hopes went out and stuff, he realises he's got to fucking keep going. So he knows that all these things have got a use. Mm-hmm. So he does, which comes becomes more prevalent as the mm-hmm. further forward we go. I mean, even the netting on the dress, he uses that to make a wee basket, didn't he? For no, trying to get fishies. Up. Aye. Oh, and there's videotapes as well. Videotapes was a thing that movies used to come in, people. Aye. VHS. <laughs> Video home. Something. <laughs> Can't remember what the standard for VHS. I probably know even right about that. Uh, Is it no visual home screening or something? Aye. Hold on a minute, just to answer this phone, mate. Aye, so he's made a wee, a wee fish and he, gets, he tries to catch some fish and he gets one wee fucking... Tiny sardine thing, didn't he? Aye, aye, Mike's had it, that's obviously no nice. No. Um, but anyway, you see, I think he sees a crab, didn't he? Yes, as he's, as he's eating that beautiful little sardine, and <laughs> he looks down at the beach and he sees a wee crab running towards the, the water. Mm. And then he gets the ice skates and decides to make his cell a spear. That's it. Yeah. But <laughs> when he catches this crab, breaks off the wee claw, think he's getting crab meat, it just spills uh, it. Whatever the fuck that is, isn't it? Or is it just. I, 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 I think it's just. <laughs> it's fucking horrible. Whatever isn't he cooked, it comes out like goo at the Aye. crab, but he still gubs it, doesn't he? Aye, oh, it's fucking winging. Um, but then as when he gets the idea, he obviously needs fire. Aye. And uh, so. he can't get it. Neither I can, and he's trying for. I felt fucking so in the moment <laughs> there for him because daylight turns to to, to darkness, Aye. turns to daylight again, and he's still trying to get the friction. He tries all sorts of ways. He does that first of all uh, with a stick, as we probably learnt in the fucking BB and the Scouts. And then you see all the blisters in his hands and all that, and he can't do that anymore. So then, what is it? He gets like a wee trough. No. It's a bark, didn't he? And put some uh, coconut, hairy, hairy coconut in it. <laughs> <laughs> and starts rubbing his spear, which is right. a spear. It's no a euphemism for anything else, right? <laughs> <laughs> which would be funny doing it that way anyway. That was oh, something else. <laughs> I've used that gift so many times, man. <laughs> uh, he's, getting, he's obviously shattered, man, and slips and fucking <clears throat> cuts his horn. Right across the palm open, didn't you, mate? Aye. And it's the most human reaction ever. It's fucking this the sticks booted to fuck. The the wee boy, the closest thing to him is the wee volleyball. He grabs it, fucking launches it, and it just screams into the ocean. Aye. He's <laughs> fucking losing all hope, the poor guy, man. Uh, um, as you say, the first thing he hands to throw to fuck was the volleyball still in the box, the boxing. Just flings it to fuck, didn't he? That's it, mate. Fucking, I've got, <laughs> I've got it down here, mate. Wilson is creating. So. Aye, what <laughs> gives birth to Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> so he decides to make a wee plinth from. Uh, takes him out the box because obviously his bloodied hand has imprinted on the volleyball, and it looks exactly like your wee one up there behind you. Oh man, oh man. Doesn't he say much, but what a character he is. What a character. <laughs> and you can see oh, that's a wee cheeky. <laughs> the wee cheeky face there he is. That's his bloody handprint. Um, so <laughs> he says to Wilson, <laughs> when you have a match, would you? <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm not doing that at all. Is, is that having a loss in his mind, or is he just trying to keep saying? I think it's a latter, mate. I think you've got Aye. to... Aye, I, I, I would need I would need interaction, and if you can't find it, you make it, don't you? Because mm. you, the worst realization is being alone. I think so. Any semblance of fucking company would be greatly yeah. appreciated, and obviously, incorporates that into this wee bar, and that's his pal. That's yeah. his pal. Yeah, they, they actually wrote dialogue for Wilson. I know. See for, yeah. aye, for Tom Hanks to oh answer back to uh, act better. Aye. But they also played with the idea of good chuck, bad chuck. Oh, right, so, I see. 
But it's even yeah. I, I read that and I was like, I just get to see the image of you know, how in Spider Man. Aye. Aye. Where he's talking to the fucking goblin mask. I was like, oh. Aye. Uh, that's that's been done, lads. <laughs> it, it don't be wrong. If anybody could have done it again, Hanks could have done it. Oh, um, definitely. Obviously, there was a parody on Family Guy. They cast away, and <coughs> we'll no say about Peter decided to stay with Wilson. <laughs> well, <son. laughs> oh fucking! But after, um, he's, after he's still trying to get us fired, he asks Wilson. He says, "You want to have a match, would you?" And then um, we get a wish. A wee bit of smoke. A wee bit of hope. A wee bit of hope. Yeah. Again, like you said, with the torch, the light going out, him finding fire, the light coming up, it gives him such a fucking boost, and it's such a high man. He's just, what, he becomes a pyromaniac overnight, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> uh, he ends up on this big massive fire on the beach, doesn't he? Aye. Uh, uh, he ends up with this big massive fire on the beach, fucking, I am the Lord of Fire! <laughs> comes to the ocean. Look what I have created. I have created <laughs> fire. At first, I thought he was singing, uh, Ruby Do, I want to be like you. <laughs> but obviously, wasn't that? It was just me. Uh, apparently, he sings fucking uh, The Doors, uh, coming like my fire. Or oh, something. right. Okay. okay. That's what he's saying. But I can't, I can't really hear it. I need to watch it back, man. Uh, so he's got the fire and he's cooking the crab, man. And when he, he finally gets a cooked crab, he's it's like the fucking, it's like, I don't know, caviar. It's like the best thing he's ever eaten in his life. Aye, aye. And he tells Wilson as such. <laughs> oh, you've got to love crab. You've got to love crab. Like, yeah. what? She's to Wilson as well. She's just in the nick of time. I don't know about you, but I don't know about you as if Wilson's been eating coconut. But another bit of that coconut would have drove me insane or something like that. Aye, aye it's, a, it's a natural laxative. <laughs> aye. And then it, it's wincing his tooth again. So he is, man. Aye. So he tries to work out where he is as well in between this, didn't he? Aye. Aye, he starts like, drawing on the wall and stuff. Keep his mind where active. Where he's flight, Um, That's what he says to Wilson. Uh, is, uh, what is it? The, it's the, side, the, the area they're going to be searching is like the size of Texas. Aye. Is that? Like, they the may never Texas? find us. Aye. They may never find us. And then <laughs> the storm... <laughs> Like, and it's just at Wilson's face. Aye. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Mental, man. So he tries to work out where he is. Obviously, fucking twice the size of Texas, you said. 500,000 square miles or some shit like that. But he's, he's working that certain he's doing Pythagoras theorem and all that. I'm fucking hell, mate. Aye, is that mean? Fucking. Well, maybe, maybe that's the old sailing thing. Maybe that's the old sailing brain. Probably. Not. I haven't mean, got that far. No, no. So the tooth has become unmanageable by this time and he decides it's coming out. Oh. Could you have done it? I think I'd have found some other way to do it. Oh, I don't know. It, toothache's fucking one of the most underrated pains known to man. I, I think I would date anything Aye. to get a tooth out because during lockdown there I broke my teeth and stuff and my teeth were rotten and everything was shut so I couldn't get them fixed and I was Aye. in my bed a 40 something old man greeting the pain, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's horrible. So I think I probably could, although the way he does it, mate. Oh, I, know, so I mean, there's, like, there's, there's got to be a different method. Uh. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think he's just wanting the one try fixes all kind of the method. Yeah. So uh, if you've not seen this film, Trips, he's got the, I put it on the socials anyway, this wee clip. He turns the ice skate upside down and points the blade right into the affected area and it's just touching the tooth. So he's holding that there. Then he reaches for a rock, doesn't he? <laughs> See, it's just the 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 nice great isn't it a precision tool, is it? No. So I'm thinking if he hits this too hard, where else is it getting cut? Aye. So to speak, you know what I mean? Aye. Like That's how I was like, there's gonna be another face. Fucking tongue and everything's coming out, man. That's it. But see that see the most wincy bit about this? See when he before he picks the rock up, I hear him just I. greeting as if I'm going to have to do this. I'm doing this. He just goes, <laughs> <laughs> grabs the rock and then goes, oh, car. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and it flies out in spectacular fashion. 
Did the tooth fly out, aye? Aye, it flies out. Oh, I never noticed that bit, mate. I just noticed the blood and obviously the pain was such that it, it passes out. Aye, it passes out. Fucking lying there like a, a dead body. Because there you go, as you say, mate, it, uh, it wasn't the most precision instrument, so... For that, just to knock a whole tooth out, you're like, ah, fuck off. It just shattered it, you know what I mean? It Aye, that's it. It looks fucking horrible. So he falls back, bloodied mouth, right next to the fire, and passes it. Aye. Then before you know it... Aye, we've got um, four years later, you see, and um, he's far better at surviving. <laughs> four <laughs> years later. <laughs> fuck Oh, well then. <laughs> well then. So four years later, I just grew this in ten I'm seconds. Little, I'm actually rolling here, I know. I've grown. <laughs> you just see a fish swimming in the sea, and the next thing you know, a big fucking harpoon comes down to it. Aye. Aye, he's, he's clearly more proficient at his fucking survival game now. Aye, he speared this fish for about fucking 15 feet, man. Aye. Um, but that, that's also the thing as well. See all that that hair and the beard and stuff. It's all real. All right, okay. Because when this before when they started filming this, Tom Hanks stopped keep myself fit, so he got like chubby like an average person. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then see after that, they postponed the filming for a year, so he could mm-hmm. lose all that weight. And then in, in that year, between that, uh, the director was filming uh, What Lies Beneath. Right. We fold them. <laughs> so, oh, I like what you're saying here. I'm just stroking my beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, that, isn't it? It's good, that. <laughs> it There's a strange comfort to be had. See, my beard just comes in fucking white and jaggy, and I can't let it go to this bloody length. But I'm going to have to take it off, guys, because it's steaming up my glasses. <laughs> if you're ever interested, you can get these uh, online. And it is emergency beards, right? <laughs> Product placement. And it says on the back, carry a beard at all times for instant growth. Sealed for extra freshness. And you've got your, you've got your ginger beard there. You've got your black beard for any pirating nights that come along. And you've got your castaway, which is what I've went for there, which is your brown beard. So emergency beards. Uh, get yours to do. Get yours to do. not leave home without them. Uh, fucking, I've, I've been caught hundreds of times out and about fucking choking for a beard. Aye, uh, there's all these stupid people out there like stroking their chin and they've not got a beard. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just for a bit of fun there. I couldn't have kept it on because I couldn't see. Um, uh, so he's, he's also fashioned a calendar um, with the light coming in the cave. It hits a certain spot mm. and it goes round in a figure of eight. As the year goes round and he's worked that out, and I think that's fucking mad and genius stuff, you know what I mean? Aye, definitely, man. It's impressive, to say the least. We've still got the VHS tapes lying about. Aye, I used to use some of the tape, didn't he? For Aye. various things. But... I've not watched them, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking at Wilson, and there's just uh, the silence is broken by him saying to Wilson, shut up! <laughs> Aye. Wilson's seen better days at all, by the way. He's grew fucking hair and everything. Ah, uh, he's a wee bit dirty, and obviously, it's four fucking years later. He's got uh, some coconut hairy hair. Aye, <laughs> uh, but uh, with him telling Wilson to shut up, um, it's actually a sound for outside, isn't it? Uh-huh. Some news washed up on the beach. Um, it's just a bit, it's a big uh, chunk of metal, isn't it? Aye, Probably. big big chunk of perplex, per, 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 perspex, uh, <laughs> but I've <other> left <laughs> a portal, which in uh, America is called like you know a porta party, <laughs> where you go to do do a whiz or hit the head, porta party, or take a shit. How do you take a shit? I don't understand. Americans, you say I'm going to take a shit, as if you're going to a shop that has shits in it and you got to take one. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to have a shit. <laughs> They're going to take a shit. Same or not. Same when you, you tell people, I'm going to write to you. That's how you say it. You don't say, I'm going to write you. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to whip me. You're going to write me. <laughs> how? You're going to use me as a fucking pen? I don't get it. Go and take your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Trips. 
<coughs> Half in tangents. Uh, there's, there's the French and the Americans go to. <laughs> Aye. So, sorry. <laughs> Portalou? Portalou? <laughs> Do a little jobby. <laughs> so he's found this quarter of a, a porta, porta potty. And <sighs> he's, he sees it as a sign, didn't he? Aye, this, this is it. It's time to escape. Because mm-hmm. he's going to sitting up to begin with, right? And he's just looking at it like a caveman. Uh-huh. Uh, but then the wind catches it. And then it, it kind of he gets it in his head that it's like a sail. It catches the wind. And it'll exactly. probably take him where the breakers win it. Aye, and that makes his, that makes his mind up. Because obviously he's still got the sailing uh, expertise in the back of his head. And knows if that catches the wind, I've got a chance to get over mm-hmm. the breakers and get out to sea. So uh, immediately sets about collecting all the, the uh, logs he can. Wants to build a raft and then um, strips all the bark as well to make rope, which is pretty ingenious as well. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, <laughs> all the while he's talking to Wilson. <laughs> Aye, and he mentions time to Wilson as well. Aye, that's a, a, the, the perfect time to, to leave. In the, as, it must be for the weather and stuff, I think. Eh? Aye, because I kind of I took it as his wee calendar. He knows exactly when the kind of winds are going to hit, where they're going to come from. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the best boost to get up and out, you know what I mean? Aye. Um, But eventually, he's stripped all the trees and he runs out of rope. Um, He's talking to Wilson. (laughs) Aye. We we need 30 feet of rope. Falls out of him, didn't he? Aye. (laughs) I've I've not got out there. And then, he he throws him at the cave, didn't he? Aye, he throws him at the wee hole in the cave and then goes, (laughs) Oh, well said! (laughs) Runs out, thinks he's lost him. Aye. Oh, fucking brilliant. But he finds him, him anyway. Aye, brings him back in and obviously for the sea water and a bit his face is washed off. So what so. we don't know at that time is he needs more rope. He's stripped all the bark he can get, but Wilson has says to him, what about the rope that you know about? Aye. And he's like, I'm not going back up there. Aye. And then the, next, the next thing you see <laughs> is he's at the top of the cliff again and he's pulling up a rope, aren't he? Yeah, he's pulling up this rope and it's got like a log attached to it. And you can clearly see that it's a noose. Aye. Right. So obviously he's contemplated suicide and the time he's been there. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> Aye. but they, they, they kind of light up again, didn't they? Where he's down there talking to Wilson. And obviously Wilson's like, I told you when you took your weight, you should have done a test on me. And he's like, I know, you're right, you're right, shut up. <laughs> Aye, so he wanted to kill himself, but he wanted to hang himself. He didn't want to jump off the cliff and smash into the rocks, you know what I mean? Aye. So that in itself tells you that, although he was at the depths of despair, he never went through with it, which was great. So gets the the dead weight up that he tried to test it with and gets the rope, obviously, and starts uh, mm. getting into this fucking this life raft. So the next thing you know, it the, the weather's turned into it. Ah, uh, that's it. He's just he's waiting on the right time for the the winds to change. Mm-hmm. The the rafts are ready to go and stuff, and he's just putting the wee finishing touches on it. Until he's still he's painting the the wings on his sail, right. but he's still he's still opened the package, the FedEx package with the wings on it. No, and before he goes, he has to leave his wee Chuck Nolan was here. Aye, on the rock. <laughs> Aye, like I mean. I don't know why he's doing that, right? But I was like, kind of myself. <clears throat> Nobody Nade, has been there in four years, mate. <laughs> who's who's going to see that? Aye. It's as if the world are eventually going to find this wee island, but that time you've left, and it just shows that you were there. But yeah. again, it's something for his insanity, isn't it? I'm leaving my mark here. Um, hopefully, if he does escape, escape, fuck, sorry. Hopefully, if he makes it, he can come back there one day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which yeah. is which is quite good as well, but it does that, and it, it fashions a wee plinth at the end of his raft for Wilson and ties him to it. I mean, he's ahead <laughs> of the boat, but that, which I always thought was precarious eh, to say the least. Doesn't matter how good he was tied in. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, he tied in with fucking. Well, you know how it's tied it's tied in with videotape, isn't it? Aye, so Wilson's tied on with videotape. You said there, mate, isn't he? On his wee plinth. Aye. Aye. Aye, because uh, like you were saying, it's not really, uh, it's, it's precarious anyway, like that, but 
remember how fucking delicate videotape was? Ah, exactly. Because <laughs> I, I thought I'd have had him next to him at all times, but he's kind of like the figurehead of the, the ship. Like, it used to be like a mermaid on the old pirate boats and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. he's up there fucking taking the brunt at everything, man. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's that far gone that he thinks Wilson's a lookout or something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the wind changes, isn't it? Aye. And he uh, sets off tackling these fucking waves. He's made a brilliant wee jetty, I know, hasn't he? Aye. Slide it into the water side of it, he's not it. Aye. Um, but, aye, comes up to these, the, the breakers again, didn't he? Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> releases his secret weapon. Le <laughs> <laughs> That's quite ingenious, man. I mean, he gets by the first few, and there's a big one coming, and he thinks, no, I'm doing this one, I know, and he gets air it. But he realises, as you say, the next one's the biggie. Mm. And as soon as the big wave's about to hit and tap him, he just releases his sails, they flip up like that, the wind catches them and takes them up and over. And yep. he's, out, he's out to sea. Yeah, yeah it's, he, he's, he's happy that he's escaped and all that. But he looks back on the island, didn't he? Aye, a wee fondness, like, didn't he? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a wee sad moment because... The island just kind of disappears into the background and all, like it never existed, didn't it? Aye. He looks back as if to say, I turned that cooker off. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that going, oh, yeah, bastard, well, so we need to go back out. <laughs> aye, but that's aye, it's a good, I mean, although it was the, the object of his fucking peril, it was also his saviour, the island as well. You know what I mean? Which was aye. great. So he's out to sea. Um, and he's past the breakers, starts rowing and rowing and rowing. Um, doesn't really know where he's gone, I don't think. But yeah. then you think to yourself, when he does see some sunshine, he's maybe knows where he is, north, east, west kind of thing, being a mm-hmm. sailor. Uh, but he's, he's uh, still rowing through the night, isn't he? Uh-huh. And then this is when the big, the big whale's coming. Uh, he just hears the, the blowhole. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is in the dead of night and he just realises he's not alone um, yeah. but the, the whale comes up didn't it just gives him a uh, look, look. Uh, it's like fucking it's like, <laughs> see me walk through the ring but I turn the fuck are you doing here <laughs> <laughs> where are you fame it <laughs> aye so but I, I just seen it as a good thing it's just a wee acknowledgement hello there fellow Fucking living thing, not that what you're doing out here, but keep going, you know what I mean? It's a sign of life, you yeah. know what I mean? But and then the next thing you know, he's fucking he's out spearing fish again, yeah, no. like red okay. snapper. Uh, he's 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 fell, he's adept at keeping himself alive. This guy, no half, uh, and then the weather turns again for the bat for the worse. I so said, back to this fucking this storm, and but it, it wrecks his wee raft in it. Aye. Flying in bits, he loses the big, he loses the big metal sail. Mm-hmm. The wings have fucking took off and left him. Aye. But as he's lying there past it, Wilson on his wee stand, he's just bobbing in and out Aye. of the water. Aye, Wilson just quietly falls off while his back's turned and having a bit of sleep. Um, just starts bobbing away, and then he wakes up, didn't he, and realizes? No. Well, sad. <laughs> well done. He's behind him at this time. It's brilliant shot, man. Aye. He wakes up in despair, and then he doesn't realise that Wilson's bobbing Aye. about behind him. It's fucking That's great. It. But he eventually yeah. turns around and j- jumps straight in the water, doesn't he? That's it. No giving a fuck about sharks or anything. No, and it, um, it, but he's not in the water long. I think he's about ten feet from the boat when he realises, shit, my raft. Mm. That's it. I need. To- Ties a wee bit of rope onto his hand, doesn't he? And mm-hmm. tries to get to Wilson, but he's just too short, man. Aye, and the tide's again, pulling the boat away. That is, that is, it's like he's like get, being given a choice in it. He's like, let this go, or yeah, lose your life, sort of thing. Choose life or whatever. That's fucking heavy emotional, that bit. I don't think you're like, that's a fucking sabo. Aye. The shape, boy. <laughs> But to him, it's no in it, no, it's just, it's then you get the full appreciation of what that wee shitty bit of leather meant to him for four years. He was pre- quite prepared to fucking risk his life to get it back, but yeah. he knows he can he? 
he makes yeah. that decision. It's fight or flight, and that's it. He just and it breaks his heart, man. It's fucking very yeah. emotional. I don't. The wee just disappears there. The tide, doesn't it? It's the music I know. The music's sad as fuck. Aye, fucking bastards. I know what they're doing, yeah. <laughs> bastards, bastards. Don't play with my emotions. Aye. So that's kind of almost as if all hope's gone. He's Aye. drifted again without Wilson. We don't know how long for after he's lost Wilson, but he just seems sitting at the edge of his raft where he was. In his hand, and just he releases it. He releases the war. Defeated, didn't he? That's it. Gave up, sort of thing. Right. And he just, just he kind of decides to just lay down and die, didn't he? That's it. Um, obviously, it's, he's laying there. We pan back to him, and he's laying there. And obviously, a big tankard ship's passing him by in it. But something's trying to wake him up before the Aye. ship. This, the, whale. The, the whale shooting the, the, the water on it for the, his blowhole. So, if like you said, you kind of looked at this from a spiritual point of view. Aye. I talked about spirit animals in my other podcast weeks ago, and I like to think that that whale was underneath all the time, just watching him, seeing where he was, seeing how he was going, and all that. And he realized that he was going to sleep through the boat. <laughs> 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 and, Wake up, you bastard. And then a big tankard and just it looks up in the outstretched hand. And it's the first time I noticed. I didn't I didn't remember from watching it originally, but you notice the people up at the the captain's deck are actually they see him anyway, didn't they? They're all they're mm-hmm. looking down as if they can't even believe what they're fucking looking at. Something <laughs> that a fucking novel, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, right out of fucking Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. <clears throat> so then it pans back to Memphis. <laughs> Napper gets the phone call. Uh, fucking nah, she's on this, this phone call. Um, all, all the new haircuts in the world only describe the Napper. Aye. Only hide the Napper, <laughs> sorry. Um, aye, so she's on the phone and the next thing she fucking, obviously somebody tells on the news mm-hmm. and she faints. Aye. But as she faints, you get a shot of your new family. Aye. Pans round to her man and her, her daughter. And a man's played by Big for Sex in the City. Aye. Who Mrs. Bruce likes to refer to me as. <laughs> no big in that way, just Mr. Big, you know what I mean? Ah. <laughs> oh. so, so, I, I, you forget the next bit. You're a big fanny. <laughs> you big bastard. <laughs> so, yeah. all intents and purposes, he has been rescued. Hurrah! And it's four weeks later, just like that. Is it? And he's he's on this he's on this plane, isn't he? With his wee uh, work colleague. Um, Aye, I, I put there yeah, on a plane. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. I want to be <laughs> fucking want to go on any plane after that, man. Oh, I definitely, man. Fucking, you would avoid them. Um, it's, his, it's his wee pal for the start, isn't it? It's uh, no, that's it. Which is Stan. There's, a, there's another wee nod here to another film. He gets a a cup of ice and he gets a Dr Pepper. Which he was fond of in Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, that's right. Dr. Pepper and two cups of ice. Yep. And then he goes, I do like ice. <laughs> <laughs> Not about a product placement there. Uh, um, definitely. Um, Stan, isn't it? It's his pal that so his wife was dying before he left. Yep. Um, and he learns that they had a funeral for him and stuff like that. And they kind of jokes light about it. What did they put in the coffin? And all that. <laughs> aye. Aye. And, um, Stan also tells him that Kelly has moved on, sort of thing. Well, that's that's full head's fucking name, Kelly. <laughs> Napper. So, aye. Just in case we're going, who the fuck is this now? <laughs> Napper Kelly, that's her gang name. <laughs> but, um, I apologize to, to Sam. I'm saying Sam. I apologize yeah. to Sam there. He says, look. I wasn't there for you and all that. I'm truly, truly sorry. He could have been a better friend before he left with regards to his wife and all that, but he was too busy prioritising his time wrongly. You know what I mean? That's it. Definitely, aye. And he's, that's how you think this is. like a change in, change in character, isn't it? He's not taking time to appreciate life and appreciate fucking other people's stories and stuff. Aye. And uh, obviously, it lands. He's, 
they've had a press conference and all that, and they've had the bunt note for him because he's a national hero and shit like that. But he's not interested in that. So we miss all that, but it's happened. And you just see him coming back into the kind of airport lobby bit. And that's where we meet Nap- Mr. Napper, my husband. And, uh, um, he comes out and I explain to him, he? Um, how this is hard for Kelly and how to, it's hard for everybody, you know what I mean? But was, do you know what I thought was quite shite? The, the way the writers fucking wrote him in as it was a friend of his dentist I, he was meant to go to. <laughs> and his name was Spalding, which is another make a sports ball. Exactly. I, mean, I was like, you're fucking doing a bit dicky about it. They just said that he met her in a time of need. Then he caught, hey, I knew your man's dentist. They referred me to you. We're not a dentist. See, again, what somebody pointed out to this, right? The age of Kelly's daughter, right? Now, he's been missing for about four years. So, see, given the age of that child. Uh huh. She gave it six months before she was back out again. Uh, <laughs> what I mean? Fucking cow. Fucking guy. <laughs> See, <laughs> Napa, she will uh, not be referred to by her Christian name any longer. All right? <laughs> It'll either be Boot Napa or Napa. Uh, oh, but there you go, mate. I, so somebody worked this out. It was like six months before she was back out on the tiles. Exactly. Uh, hey, he's away. Woohoo! <laughs> Took that fucking jumper with him. What's that? <laughs> but see, Napa's, see, her husband, right, comes in, just says, look, more or less, she's sorry, she's not ready to see you and all that. That's him, in it? It's not her. Uh, he's he's kind of convinced her not to in, and he'll uh, talk to him. Uh, he's he come on. Come on the uh, but um, once they get the guy leaves, you see uh, Chuck. He looks at the window and he sees Kelly anyway, and she's sitting greeting at the motor and all that, isn't he? Aye, but she's yeah. wanting to get back. Aye. That's why I think it was him. Yeah. So look, you're better not getting in there, which is another dicky move by him. Definitely, mate. Um, fucking Lothario fucking orthodontist cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it goes to uh, Chuck's. Is that a hotel room or something he's got? Aye. See, before that, but sorry. Um, See when he's looking at the window and he's looking at Napa and her man. How many fucking FedEx airplanes are there? No. Is it FedEx Airport? <laughs> fucking hell. It's as far as I can see. I shit you not. No. And either side's perfectly symmetrical. Like if you were to go over the brow of the horizon, there'll just be mere fucking FedEx planes, you know what I mean? There's yeah. never a plane in the fucking air. <laughs> anyway, it's just a gripe. To get some fucking deal with it, FedEx, I'll tell you. Oh, definitely. So they go to the hotel room, mate. Sorry, I cut you off. When you go, I I love the this hotel room, isn't it? and it's always his colleagues and all this, and they're all having this big shindig for him, having him back. <laughs> shindig. <laughs> <laughs> and they uh, obviously they all start leaving and stuff. <laughs> back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, he's like, he's wee pals like that saying, "Why tomorrow we bring you back to life and fucking." Uh, get you back to work and all that. You're like, that's the fucking last thing you want to do. You know what I mean? Aye. Aye, I think he's like... fucking isolation. And then, you, oh, aye, I'll be back to work in a month, mate. Like, fuck aye. off. Aye. <laughs> aye, we need to do a back to work for you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you seek medical advice during your absence? <laughs> Dr. Wilson, you bastard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're all leaving anyway, and technically he uh, turns back around and he's in this hotel room. And the remnants of the the spreader left the buffet, yeah. and ah, quite a lot of seafood, what... which I'm fucking pretty sure he didn't touch. Yeah, exactly. As I, as I was going to say that, it's like he's looking, he's got, and he's seen all the luxuries that he struggled for on this island, like the crab and then the, the wee the wee lighter thing, and you see him see when he just click your button, fire, Aye. and just see his reaction, just like shakes his head. And the world's biggest crab. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Bye. Um, size of the things, man. Oh, that's the things that ate Amelia Earhart into it. Yeah, apparently, aye. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Imagine waking up and getting eaten alive. Oh, look into it. Amelia Earhart crash landed on a desert island and all. Look it up, guys. Um, so that night, it gets, it's, it's night time, obviously. He's going to sleep. 
and you just see his bed that's made his line in it and the light's going on and off. And it's him on the floor. He's got his pocket watch with a picture of an apple. And he's just doing what he'd done in the cave, isn't he? With the torch, nice just turning yeah. the light on and off, on and off. Just fucking obviously regressing back to four years past, man. Yeah. And I think it, it gives him the... It, that's what kind of sets him up to go, right, fuck it, we need to get this in and done with sort of thing. Aye. Get this spoke about. Definitely. So he turns up at Napa's house, didn't he? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a normal sized door. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lollipop shaped door. Castel de Napier. <sighs> um, he's aye, so he gets on her porch. Um, do you know it's probably no right, but do you know I think this looks like his home in Alabama in Forrest Gump? Aye. Like ranch, it's out in the opening on that. Just probably no, but I just seen it as that. Anyway, gets onto the porch. And he's he's just struggling with himself to press her bell, isn't he? Aye, I don't think he's going to press it. I think he goes to press it and then decides against it. But obviously she's waiting up because she's obviously got the same kind of feelings. Know what I mean? Aye, no closure to them. Do you know what I mean? and, but she does say when he, he just opens, she opens the door and says, I've seen your cab. And uh, gives him a big tuddle. And he invites him into the house. And it's... <laughs> he goes, see when she goes, like, I'll get you a towel. I thought she was going to hand him the hand towels he bought her. Like, I've, no, <laughs> I've no used them. <laughs> yeah, fucking ram him right up your ass. Aye, but you're funny. I, I, exactly, man. <laughs> fucking brilliant. That would have been funny, mate. You used to fucking wrote this. Tell me. <laughs> your hand towels there. Still in a ribbon. <laughs> Barras, fuck's sake. <laughs> everything's designed for, for him getting through the porch into her hallway, into her kitchen. Everything's designed to just go boom, boom, boom to him. That she's got a new life, she's married, she's moved on, she's got a kid. Is I mean, see the, the fridge door opening? No. Fucking right in your face. Her last three and a half, four years of memories in photographic forum. I said, man. Oh, fuck's sake, man. Because I think, I think he goes in there with the intention of saying, I fucking... I still love you and all that stuff and there's run away together but I think we've seen all that he kind of sees that nah I'm, I'm destroying another life here sort of thing I, I does say so, I should never have gotten that plane um, and she takes him out to the garage and gives him his car back doesn't she yeah and he's good mate and he finally get, he gets his keys back with his pen knife <laughs> yeah, you see him flank at home and he's like that could have been fucking handy <laughs> I could have bored wee holes and coconuts with that. Aye. But they have a right good, big, passionate winch, didn't they? Aye. Ah, the old flame still burns bright. Aye, but again, it's it's all for closure. Um, he gets in the car, drives away in the rain. She runs after him. Um, he comes back. She gets in the car soaking wet. They kind of have another hug and kiss. And you think they're just about to drive away together. Aye. And he, he, he just looks down and then turns to her. And she says, didn't she? And the napper says, mm-hmm. and then it was only nappers can. <laughs> I need to go home. Aye. And and that's that, that, that fucking that music again with the rain coming down. Aye. Getting you in the fields. Getting you in the fields. Um, but he does, he apologises to her as well. She says, I'm so sorry. Aye. And I can see him. apologise but... to Sam, you know what I mean? It's... Aye. Because when they're, they're in the the house to begin with, see, instead of talking about the elephant in the room, so to speak, they just start, he just starts talking about stupid subjects, know what I mean? Yeah. Just they put it off sort of thing. That's, That's why I think she runs out, it was like the, but then they actually talk about it sort of stuff. But, yeah. but still, also he's, he's wide enough to know that, nah, if you leave, it, it's wrecking your life and two lives, whereas, he just exactly. takes shoulders there. Just his life getting wrecked on it. Exactly. It's at this point I know I, I, I was I was expecting the ring to get the ring back, but I never see it. Cow <laughs> found it. <laughs> I, I mean? Fucking I just bought uh, punted it. <laughs> and then, I and then you're saying as well, right, about the timeline 
for him going missing to her getting pregnant, right? What's the last thing she says to him? And I always knew you were still alive. I, <laughs> I don't I don't next tip, did you? Aye? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, your legs did they fucking know, did they? The uh, fucking, fucking, you're a stop out. <laughs> spread like lurp pack your boot. <laughs> but uh, Aye, so he goes out to his pal assistant, he Sam's. Aye. Which is a, an hour I ain't seen, man, because it's just oh, continuous. It single shot, camera pan, monologue, Aye. fucking excellent, mate. And it's just kind of, well, what I say to you, I think this is like fucking God manipulating this guy's story. He teach him something. And he kind of sounds that out like, he lands on that island, gives up hope and all that, and she's the one thing that kept him gone. Then yeah. he comes back and he's lost her all air again, sort of thing, because she's moved there. They've well, moved on, sorry. Aye. See, when he says that, I've lost her all over again. You see his eyes just welling up with fucking tears, man, and I was sitting there fucking welling up for him. Mm-hmm. And he's telling Sam about, all his, about how low he felt and he was going to kill himself. And like you said as well, it's as if on a spiritual plane, it's the only way his God or God, or your God or your choosing, could have made him change his ways. Aye. It's going through all that. And not because he was a bad man, just because his priorities were the right way around. That's it. And Definitely. it makes you look at yourself. Aye. <laughs> aye. Yes. Um, I just thought there was just a lot of things in it, mate, that's kind of sent it that way. Exactly. It's the first time I'd kind of seen it. Know what I mean? In that way, mm-hmm. but um, but I would, and for a family man, there's there's billions as like it. I mean, I would love nothing more than to stay in the house more than I do. I would love no have to be able to do overtime, but I need to. If uh, I don't do overtime, and I don't work, then we don't have the other things. But if I stay half and all that, we don't have the other things because I can't pay for them. It's just uh, it's a double edged sword. The fucking society's got us fucked, man. <laughs> um. But he says um, he's been given this chance and it's just to keep going because he don't know what the tomorrow brings and all this sort of stuff. Uh, so he goes back to work in it and he starts delivering uh, the packages that kept him alive on this island. I, I mean, his final words to Sam was like, I've got to keep breathing because tomorrow the sun will rise. You know what mm. I mean? You're like, oh, fuck, you know. Blows your way. But it's <laughs> I back at work, but is it, it's just that one package you kept, is it, though? No, no there's other ones left. Aye, because the, 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 the volleyball is in the passenger side seat and all that. That's a so new one. That's aye, a new so, volleyball. I know, but that's, oh, I mean, I think he's, right. he's, he's replacing them. items and going to deliver them all. So, yeah. well, get, there you go, mate. That went right there in my fucking head. Sorry. Aye. I just thought it was buying kind of comfort items that he had on the island, you know what I mean? I had no right. semblance of that at all. Yeah. Wow. Um, but And I thought he'd just kept that one package to deliver, and if he'd done that, he'd done his job kind of thing, but no, well done, mate. And see, yeah. look at that, that's my thinking again, is like, see, he's obviously seen them as a sign, because they get sent them to keep him alive. So, they're taking these items to where they're supposed to go. Uh-huh. Is it going to, is it the next part of his journey sort of thing? Ah, uh, cool, mate. Which... Well done. See, this is why you're the fucking guru, man. I'm no. <laughs> the guru. It takes him to where we started, Dick Bettina's That's Ranch, doesn't it? Uh, which no longer has Dick no. on the sign. It's just the Bettina uh. Ranch now, well spotted, mate. I was going to say That's that, up. but you fucking jumped in and beat me to a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't, uh. um, but there's nobody home, and the first thing he notices, he looks at the backyard, and there's the big sculpture of the wings in it. Yeah. The FedEx wings, man. Brilliant. Yeah. And he's, he's looking for uh, the person that lives there, but obviously they're no one. So he writes a note. This package kept me alive. And Aye, thank you. Leaves it uh, And then goes back to where it all started, the crossroads. Do you know what I mean? Because now he's got another decision to make. It started out at the crossroads, even though he wasn't there, but it ends up at the crossroads. And then the last sculpture comes back while he's just sitting. You look last. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, she's telling him where everything is sort of thing go that way go that way blah 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 mm-hmm. and he's like oh thanks and uh, which another wee nod she goes ah, ah 
Good luck, cowboy. A wee nod to his Woody character. <laughs> Fucking well done again. See? See? You've got a sight. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a sight about you. You see things. Uh, deep people. You're like Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> you drink and you know things. Uh, <laughs> um, but he's sitting there. He's still at the crossroads sort of thing. And like the female has fallen, like I say, he's, he's been sent in signs. He notices the wings on the back of her truck. Mm-hmm. And it's gone that way. So it's... And the way you see the shot, he's in the crossroads. Do you follow the sign or do you just go your own way sort of thing? Aye. And it fades once, out. Aye. Once again, it's all prevalent towards time, which he now it? has a fucking... a better appreciation for. It's not a schedule to live by. It's a gift to see his man, I suppose. That's and it. that's how it ends. We don't that's know it. where he goes, but I'd that's like that's to it. think that he followed her right up the road. That's it. They were right good scene to. Uh, <laughs> uh, you hope that he's learned his lesson. Because yeah. there's the, the wee connection at the start. She was listening to Elvis. Uh-huh. He gets that wee boy Elvis. So it was like they were going to come together sort of thing. Aye. That was all so. meant to be, but that was Castaway. It was an absolutely brilliant film. It's great to watch it again because I honestly haven't watched it in maybe over 15 years. Aye. I, I, I haven't seen it in fucking long enough. And I forgot how good it was because before I watched it again, I thought, ah, it's a good film. Like probably going to be a 7.5 or some shit like that. But uh, what you gain it? What you gain this one out of 10? Uh, I'll get a, an 8.5, mate. An 8.5. I, I liked it, mate. Because oh. obviously that new appreciation I've seen it for you, say the thing, you know what I mean? Right. Um, oh, they're exact same as you, 8.5. Solid uh, 8.5. Uh, oh, see what was hilarious, but see the, the director, he got asked at a Q&A thing. So what, what was inside the box? <laughs> and he went like, oh, it was a waterproof uh, solar-powered uh, satellite phone. Slap <laughs> 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 like, fucking yes. Um, great answer. Uh, definitely, man. <laughs> Brilliant, man. So there we go, folks. As we said, cast away. Uh, thanks very much for watching again or listening. We're going to be on all the uh, the pods that you're used to, whether it be Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Deezer, etc. at all. But uh, get over to our YouTube, subscribe and watch us as well. You'll be able to see our uh, kind of props <laughs> and shit and see the interaction between me and Chris as well, which is quite good. Um, <laughs> I feel oh. as well. Yes. Oh, definitely. Um, have you decided on uh, the next film? <laughs> <sighs> that is your clue, people. That's not uh, a clue at all. I'm going to tell you. It's coming up for May the 5th. May the 4th, sorry. Fuck uh, May the 4th. <laughs> It would have been a totally different film. <laughs> That's what they fucking God's say. Sake, man. <laughs> fucking Alec Guinness just fucking turned in his grave there. <laughs> uh, we are going to be doing our next film review is the original, yeah, Star Wars New Hope. Uh, uh, is that what we're right. going for? Aye, let's do it. To celebrate May the 4th uh, as only we can. Um, I don't know about props and shit, but I'm sure Chris will have the curtains drawn and we'll have some <laughs> lighty up <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't even whistle with my teeth on it. Oh. But, um, Star Wars A New Hope, 1977, 6, 6, 7, 1976, isn't it? Uh, maybe I. Anyway, before I was born, <laughs> believe it or no, yeah. uh, we'll be reviewing that. Um, a film that I think you've seen about a million times, and I've seen a million times. Oh, um, I've I seen this on videotape, DVD, Blu-ray, and then streaming. Aye, Jesus. <laughs> Christ, I seen it at Christmas as a wee boy and everything. And then, as you say, VHS. And I wore out the fucking trilogy. I had the tr- trilogy on VHS. I wore them out. And then it was DVDs. Then I sold my DVD. And blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. So, Star Wars A New Hope. Thanks very much, everybody, for tuning in this week. Uh, we'll get some stuff up in the socials for this for next week. And uh, please like, subscribe, share. Leave a comment if you've got any suggestions as well. We'd love to hear from them. But uh, from myself, it is cheerio. Aye, and for me, it's 
Cheetah bye. Oh, Cheetah bye. <laughs> well, bye. And action. <laughs> Trust me. Grow up.